Hey guys, welcome back to this uh, free series of tutorials on Forex trading and uh, today is number day two. I'm really excited to see you here on this wonderful yet a bit chilly day in Brisbane. Um, so what are we going to be talking about today? Today we're talking about rookie mistakes and by rookie mistakes I mean mistakes that I've made, mistakes that I've seen other people make in their journey uh, on the foreign exchange market. Like, like with anything, you are going to make mistakes when you start, start something. You, it's, you know, success is about failing many times, getting up and moving on. But the difference with Forex is that every mistake can cost you a lot of money. Sometimes it can cost you your whole balance. And uh, one of the mistakes, for example, is putting too much money on your real account when you start. And, you know, you put $10,000 and you lose them overnight. Well, that's a very big and painful mistake. So my um, goal in the, this tutorial is to help you shave time and money off that learning curve. Remember the learning curve we were talking about in the previous tutorial where I had like two massive dips in my uh, confidence in uh, trading the Forex market? Well, I want to help you uh, reduce that learning curve and make it as smooth as possible. So stay tuned and now off we go to the top rookie mistakes of Forex traders. All right, back behind the computer here and let's get straight at it here in our free training. So today we're talking about the rookie mistakes. First of all, we're going to knock out the seven rookie mistakes that you need to avoid when trading the foreign exchange. And also we're going to add in some bonus myths that we're going to bust those myths about the foreign exchange market. And you'll see that myths are a bit different to uh, rookie mistakes and we'll understand how and why exactly they differ when we get to that section. And it's all about saving you time, money, and overwhelm. Overwhelm, which may come when you're just starting out on the foreign exchange or when you're on that journey to from just trading to becoming a successful trader and being able to generate, consistently generate good profits from the foreign exchange. So why do successful people trade the foreign exchange? Well, we kind of, we're going to pause here. We're going to recap on why we're doing this, why we exploring the foreign exchange market and what's the whole purpose of this exercise well there's a few reasons why successful people trade forex well first one is the financial freedom it brings you after you become consistently profitable in the foreign exchange market you don't need to go to work anymore you don't need to do the nine to five grind and you become your own boss in the sense that as you choose how much time you want to spend on uh, forex trading and that is going to govern how much returns you're going to get from this activity and that is a great feeling you it just changes your life completely it also uh, foreign exchange also gives you location independence because we live in a digital age now we can trade from wherever we want to as long as you have your laptop and an internet connection you don't need to be sitting in an office you don't need to be uh, even sitting in your home country or uh, city, you can be wherever you want. You could literally be sitting on the beach or um, at a ski resort and or even in a jungle if you wanted to. As long as you have an internet connection, you are fine. All of these principles and concepts, they're all in your head. You just have to apply them and you can be wherever you want to do that. And this leads to a third reason, which is an awesome lifestyle. This is my favorite one. You, as I said, you could be on a beach, you could be at a ski resort and therefore the meaning of the word vacation is kind of lost. You don't have to wait anymore to take vacations. Your life can be one huge vacation. You just blend together working and traveling or working and relaxing. And you just have to conduct a few trades, maybe once a day or several times a week. And then you're free for the rest of the time and you can do whatever you want. And that is by far one of the most attractive things in Forex trading. And also, you don't need a huge starting capital. So unlike uh, the stock market or other markets where you, if you want to earn big profits, you need to invest a lot of money at the start. In Forex, you don't have to do that. Um, in Forex, you can literally start out with $500 or $1,000. And within a few months, you can be already generating quite good income and that will s would grow with time and eventually it can give you that financial freedom and independence and 
everything I'm sharing with you today comes from experience. So I've been trading the foreign exchange for over eight years now, and I've been able to generate multiple six figures in profit. And that is despite a small starting balance. In the previous tutorial in this um, free training, we, I gave you a bit more detail on my story. And you saw there that I only started with $1,000 in my account. And that $1,000 has grown since and it's allowed me to move to Australia, to um, do my master's degree here, to live an awesome lifestyle, to do whatever I wanted to do. And I would have not been able to um, do this without uh, foreign ex the foreign exchange. It has literally changed my life completely. It has uh, The foreign exchange has brought me freedom. Um, if I want to work, I can work. If I, w what, I do what I want to do. And that has become um, the sole driver of what my life is now and it's it's a great feeling when you have it and um, it's definitely something worth putting the effort in for and like I said you become your own boss but not only in the sense that you choose when you want to work and how much you want to work and how much effort you want to put into this um, occupation which is a forex trader but also in the sense that you are now responsible to yourself and it is in your own hands to discipline yourself. Forex trading is that activity that requires a lot of discipline to for you to become successful. And through Forex trading, you will learn a lot of important qualities in life that you won't only apply in Forex trading. So like uh, things like uh, discipline and research and um, pattern recognition, they, they can be applied in a lot of different fields in life. And so that's, that's another great thing about Forex. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way and we understand why we're doing this, uh, the driving principles behind it, why we want to be successful, um, let's get straight into the rookie mistakes. So myths and mistakes are just as important as learning what to do, just as important because they help you shave hours and hours of um, your learning curve. There we go. Why? Because they can take hours and hours and hours and dollars off of your learning curve. And that is very, very important. Uh, the faster you get to that state where you can generate, consistently generate um, profitable returns from the foreign exchange, the smoother will your transition be to financial freedom, location independence, and all these things. And plus, why would you want to make mistakes that other people have already made? You, we like, there's a set list of these mistakes that 90% of traders make. So my goal today is to help you avoid these mistakes and that will save you time and that will save you money. And it is super important. It is super important to get these things uh, down pat right away so that you don't, you know, you don't uh, step on the same uh, traps and that you avoid them completely. All right, so let's get on with these rookie mistakes. Rookie mistake number one, trading without a stop loss. By far the biggest and most one of the most frequent mistakes. If you ever enter into a position on the foreign exchange market, your position should have a stop loss. It's just a given. Because if your position doesn't have a stop loss, you're basically asking for trouble. You, The loss is not limited uh, on your account. And I, I don't really... It doesn't really matter what you think of the market situation, how confident you are in the fact that the market will go up or will go down if you're selling. There is still always a possibility, even if it's a 1% chance or less, for the market to go in the opposite direction. And if you don't have a stop loss, you are risking to lose everything you have within you know, a split second. Sometimes it happens that quickly. And moreover, Without a stop loss, it just means that you don't have a good trading strategy. You don't, you know, you don't know what you're doing because any professional forex trading strategy has to have a stop loss because that not only limits your losses but also allows you to understand, it, like emotionally protects you emotionally because you won't have to sit there and f think, wonder when you have to exit. A stop loss is very important and it's extremely important for you to think through where your stop loss will be set before you open up your um, position on the foreign exchange market. Rookie mistake number two, not having a trading strategy or money management in your trading strategy. So we talked about these two in the previous um, tutorial in this free series 
and we figure out that money management is the most important step in uh, forex trading and uh, trading strategy is the second most important so if you don't have those and you just run out there in onto this unknown market uh, this foreign exchange and you start trading sporadically and randomly you are also asking for trouble because first of all you don't have a framework what you're going to be doing and second of all um, you it is going to be very uh, daunting in the terms of psychology you're going to be always worrying about your trades having tra a trading strategy and money management put together and governing how you enter and exit the market and when you do that allows you to be stable and confident in your returns rookie mistake number three over trading I see this a lot often traders um, when they have a trading strategy they even or when they don't which which is even worse but traders often just try to um, always look for opportunities to enter the market and even when there is none they will still keep looking and changing time frames and you know maybe um, being a, a bit uh, lenient with their trading strategy and adjusting the rules here and there just to be always entering and exiting the market and not kind of wasting time you a lot of traders think that if you're not in the market you're uh, wasting an opportunity to make money and you're wasting time that you know uh, could be uh, were well spent with uh, in a position in the foreign exchange market. That's not true. It is, you know, it's a given that not always you're going to be in the market. And sometimes there can be hours that you're not trading. For some strategies, there can be days. For some strategies, we're, which are like more uh, long term, there can be weeks that people don't enter into the market. Um, we will, of course, be looking at more frequently trading strategies. But still, there are times. Uh, which can be quite lengthy when you are not entering the market, not because um, you're missing out on opportunities, but because there just aren't any uh, signals for you to enter the market using your trading strategy. So you shouldn't um, trade just to trade. You should trade only when the your trading system tells you to trade. And a lot of this comes from the fact that people don't have an outlet they don't have an activity that they do in the background especially if you're just trading the foreign exchange market if you've gotten to this level where you've quit your job and you're confident in your returns and you're just sitting there at your home office and you're trading and then all of a sudden there's no signals and then you're you don't know what to do you don't know what to do with yourself and you start looking around and you know I've been there I've done that and you start making mistakes that is not um, not a good thing and to avoid that a, a good uh, remedy is to have something that you do in the background something that you know you know that when you don't have uh, an opportunity to enter the market then you go and you know you play golf or you uh, you go for a hike or you go swimming or you go riding your bicycle or something like that some activity that takes your mind off of trading or you can even read a book things like that so you have to always keep this in mind and um, especially when you're getting to this stage where you're becoming successful this can trip you up because people are used to working a nine to five and they know okay I work now and then I rest but with Forex there may be times when you're you, you can only work for an hour because you know you've all made all your entries and exits and everything like that you've set up your trades and then um, you don't have anything to do for the next two hours until you know the next session starts or um, enough bars appear on the chart that you can make more decisions or your indicators adjust and things like that so you need to take this into account that uh, you will have lots more free time and you have to fill it in with other things so that's a good thing to think about uh, not only at the start of your forex trading journey but as you're getting to that more successful stage where you are looking to quit your job and do this full time Rookie mistake number four, trying to win each individual trade. Big, big no-no. You have to understand that it's inevitable. It just, it just, that's how the world works. You will win trades and you will lose trades. And there will be losses. Eventually, there will be losses. Uh, it just, just means that your profits have to be greater than your losses. That's all it means. Um, and a lot of um, traders make this mistake when they try to win each individual trade or make each individual trade profitable and they put their stop losses further away or they 
um, put their take profits shorter or things like that. So this is um, a major thing to consider when you're trading that if you have a loss, you just you know, have to take it on the chin and move on to the next trade. It happens. And if you have a good trading strategy, then it will even tell you uh, what the probability of your losses are and how many you know, out of 100 trades, how many on average loss trades you should have. And you can check with those things just to make sure that you're on the right track. But just keep in mind that you will never be able to achieve for every single trade to be profitable. Rookie mistake number five, unrealistic expectations. So sometimes traders think that um, they'll just jump into the Forex market and they'll be successful and they'll be earning millions within you know, a year or half a year and so on. You, your, your, your expectations have to be realistic. It all depends on how much time and effort you put into the market. Uh, it depends on how good your trading strategy is, which um, conditions are governing you know, the financial climate in the world and things like that. So you have to, of course, you can earn lots and lots of money. And that's, that's not uncommon to start with a small balance and then go to you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars within a year or so. But you can't start trading with that expectation. You have to start trading with the expectation that you'll be putting in effort. Um, you'll be doing research. You'll be learning what it is. What you'll be getting better and better at your trading. Um, and then, based on your trading strategy, you can have expectations around how much you expect uh, revenue you expect to generate within um, certain periods of time. And you know, set that minimum. Set that minimum level for your expectations. And then exceed them, over exceed them, over achieve, and that's a good way to do it. Uh, whereas the, doing the opposite is can be very harmful. If you set very high expectations and then you under achieve them, or even worse, you you start losing money because your expectations are too high. Um, of course, that will kind of kill all the interest in forex trading. So, don't set unrealistic expectations. Earning lots of money is possible, and if you're determined, you will get there. But set yourself realistic goals and expectations, especially when you're just starting out. Rookie mistake number six, trading too many currency pairs. Um, that kind of intertwines with uh, rookie mistake number three, where we were talking about over trading. Sometimes people tend to do this. They see that their trading strategy is only generating two or three trades you know, per day or per week on this currency pair and, uh, and another two on this other currency pair. And then they decide to apply it to you know, 10 or 15 different tra uh, currency pairs. And that is also a very bad idea. And I'll tell you why. It's because you as a trader need to develop an intimate understanding of your currency pairs that you're trading. And regardless of the fact that a lot of the time trading strategies are developed for certain currency pairs, you also need to kind of become good friends with the currency pair. And I'm not talking about being emotional about your trading or um, being very biased or subjective. You still have to follow your trading strategy. But as time progresses, if you're trading two or three currency pairs at most, what you'll see is that you will start to understand how that currency pair works, what, um, how the time of the day affects it, how the sessions affect it, um, what kind of impulse or trend movements it can experience what are the average movements you, you will become more and more familiar with it and actually it's not a conscious process the human brain is designed in a way that we are very very good at pattern recognition that is one of our you know most important evolutionary traits that we can recognize um, patterns in pictures and different movements and different bars, charts, graphs, and so on. It's, it's just how we've been um, developing as a species. And you will see that the more, of, the more you spend time with a certain currency pair, the better you will start to understand it. And why is that good? Well, that is because you will understand how your trading strategy, you will intimately understand how your trading strategy is being able to generate revenue from the movements of your currency pair. And... Uh, so you will be able to adjust it if required. You will be able to kind of observe these discrepancies and you will feel when your trading strategy actually can be better and you'll be able to adjust it and make it better. That's number one. Number two, you will be able to sense when the market is changing. 
and we'll get to this in a second but you will need to um, at times feel that something has changed with your currency pair of your market and you need to retest or re-optimize your trading strategy and understand how how you can make it once again better or adapt it to the market and if you're trading like 20 currency pairs there's no way you can keep track of all those things so you know limit yourself to two or three maximum and just get really good at them it's it's an important important process to uh, become pro a pro at those two or three currency pairs that you are um, monitoring and this leads up to rookie mistake number six oh seven not adapting to the changing market conditions once again there's no um strategy that will always generate profits everything becomes outdated with time and maybe in, in a generalistic sense it still works but you still have to adjust all the parameters you still have to see um where where you need to tweak your trading strategy and it's an ongoing process it's a part of being a forex trader if that wasn't the case if there were trading strategies that were always always working and generating consistent profits for for during your lifetime then we would all be millionaires by now or billionaires in that case um so you have to kind of adapt your uh, trading strategy and your trading style depending on where the market is if you see like a recession in the market or if you see um uh, a crisis or if you see that one one country has entered um, into a new kind of type of policy in regards to their currency these kind of things can all change how uh, the currency moves and therefore you'll have to change how you trade these currencies and therefore adjust your trading strategies and that's an important thing uh, just remember that that there's no strategy out there that will work forever and ever and ever any strategy will have to be uh, revised with time Okay, so we've done the seven rookie mistakes. Let's just quickly repeat them all just to um, put a bottom line under this. So we'll go back. All right, rookie mistake number one, trading without a stop loss. Number two was not having a trading strategy or money management. So either if you don't have either of those, that's a big mistake. You have to have both of those in uh, within your trading system. Uh, Rookie mistake number three, over trading. Don't trade just to just for the sake of trading. Trade when you are meant to trade. Rookie mistake number four, trying to win each individual trade. That will never happen. That has never happened before. Um, you have to accept that there will be losses sometimes. Uh, rookie mistake number five, unrealistic expectations. Set yourself realistic goals and expectations for your trading. Uh, number six, trading too many currency pairs. You know, can... Um, help can make you lose focus and that's not a good thing you should focus on two or three that you want to get really good at you know in this in this time frame or in this period of time this year or two years and then move on to the next ones if you're very good at these ones so focus important to focus on currency pairs and not adapting uh, to changing market conditions can also lead to ruin markets always changing you have to adapt your style and trading strategies to the changing markets so those are rookie mistakes now how about some myths so myths are a bit different to mistakes myths um, myths hold you back now so myths are things that you may have heard about the foreign exchange market or that people commonly believe which are not true but because you are because they're in your head they're not allowing you to start trading or they're not allowing you to become successful there's things that hold you back now whereas rookie mistakes are things that will hold you back later when you're ready trading where you know you're making the bling bling happen when you're making the uh, consistent profits come uh, to your account so let's talk about the myths myth number one who am i to trade forex i'm not an expert and this you know ties into things like I don't have financial education or I didn't uh, study economics in uh, in my bachelor or even at school I, I don't I have never heard of Forex before or um, things like that so only people believe that only experts and professionals can turn trade Forex well that is completely not true um, you don't need any sort of financial education to understand the foreign exchange of course you will have to do some research and kind of understand how it works and uh, what's uh, what are the driving forces behind behind the foreign exchange where it came from and things like that so you have to understand the basics and you have to understand the 
acronyms, the jargon that forex traders use and so on. But at the same time, you don't have to be a professional or an expert in anything to trade the foreign exchange market. Like I've seen um, friends of mine who, you know, are just, some of them are programmers, some of them um, are just painters, some of them um, just in completely random different professions, architects and so on. If you get into this field and you're gen genuinely passionate about making um this passive income and generating profits online through the foreign exchange, you will be successful. You just have to put in the time and effort and you know follow um, the rules that we outlined or the steps that we outlined in the previous um, video in this free training. You can become successful whoever you are and whatever you've done previously in life. It doesn't really matter at all. Myth number two, Forex is going to be hard and confusing. So once again, no, it is very, very simple, very straightforward. It, you can grasp the concepts of foreign exchange within less than a week. Probably in a couple of days, you can just sit down. You do have to find all the materials um, and just collate all the information that you need. But as long as you learn, you know, what uh, a sell, a buy order is, what ask and bid prices are, like all these kind of terms and uh, that Forex traders use and that are common in the market and you kind of understand where the prices come from and how um, your broker works and so on it doesn't take a long time it is very simple to understand i mean probably a five-year-old or a 10-year-old kid could understand it if um, he wanted to so forex is not hard or confusing at all number three i need a huge starting balance Completely irrelevant. You don't need a huge starting balance, and I am living proof to that. I started forex trading with a thousand dollars, was able to generate six figures, multiple six figures of profit. Don't need a huge balance. You can even start with five hundred dollars. And uh, leverage. There is leverage on the foreign exchange market, which can uh, be up to you know one to five hundred, or even one to two hundred is sometimes sufficient to generate substantial profits. If you use leverage, you will be um, you can generate a lot of money with a very low starting balance. So that's a complete myth. Don't need a huge balance. Le myth number four, leverage is bad for you. Speaking of leverage, right? Um, why do people think that leverage is bad for you? Well, because of course, leverage increases your risks. We're not going to talk about what leverage is and how it works. Like um, we go into detail more about that in uh, in the courses I have on Forex Boat. But you can look it up if you want to. Leverage basically allows you to enter positions that are much greater than any uh, funds that you have on, on your account. So you can even trade like a million dollars only having you know a couple of thousand dollars on your account. And that is leverage. And of course, if you use it unwisely, it can hurt you. If you enter positions and then they go against you, using leverage, uh, those positions can eat up all of your balance. And that's why people think leverage is bad. But it's actually not bad for you. It's like having a sports car. You, if you have a Ferrari and um, you drive it really fast and crazy and carelessly, of course, it is dangerous to have that Ferrari for you. But at the same time, somebody else who has a Ferrari and knows how to use it and uh, uses it carefully and drives it responsibly, it is not bad for him to have the Ferrari. It's just giving him additional benefits that he wouldn't have in a Volkswagen or a or a Toyota or something else. Don't think that leverage is bad. It's a complete myth. Leverage is good. You just have to know how to use it and it will help you get to your goal quicker. Myth, myth number five, day trading will lose, lose you money. Complete myth. I hear this all the time. Uh, traders say that uh, well, day trading basically is trading within the day, it's trading hourly time frames or 15 minute time frames or 30 minute time frames and so on. So when you enter and exit the market within one day, you can, you can of course go over two days and so on. But uh, on average, you trade within the day and that's your goal to kind of make a few trades within one day. So a lot of traders out there say that the market moves randomly and they, you know, they have um, I'm, you know, doing air quotes here. They have proven theories that market is, um, is a completely a stochastic process and therefore everything is random within that daily or less uh, time frames less than one day. So what they do is they say, okay, I'm not going to trade within one day. I'm going to trade, you know, once a week. And 
So my, I will open a position now and I'll hold it for a week, a few days or a week or even a month. And then, you know, I'll, that's how they trade the market. They enter the market maybe a um, hundred times a year or, or probably less than that. So two, one or two or three positions per week. And that is, um, that is their choice, but day trading will not lose you money. I have always been a day trader. My favorite time frame is the 15 minute time frame. So my most two working time frames are 15 minute time frame and one hourly time frame. And that's how I've always generated my money. I cannot stand trading once a week or t three times a week. And why I can't stand that? Well, that's because of something we discussed in the previous tutorial in this free series is because more is better. If you trade more frequently, you get to train, train more. And also, on top of that, if you trade more frequently, you benefit from the law of large numbers. And there's a mathematical theory for you that the more frequently you trade, the more stable your results will be. And I've always traded that way. It's, that's been, the, you know, the governing fundamental of all of my trading. And I just don't understand people who throw out claims like that there that day trading will lose you money. Day trading won't lose you money. You can choose if you want to trade within one uh, in the uh, in one day, and if you want to trade the 15 minute time frame, hourly time frame, you can do that. If you want to, you can trade the weekly time frame. Some people do that, and, and they're successful. Um, but my my personal choice is trading intraday, and um, this is a complete myth. Day trading can earn you money. Just have to do it right. Just basically have to have good trading strategies, and it's it's the same as any kind of trading. Doesn't matter what time frame you trade. Don't don't listen to those people. <laughs> okay, myth number six: profitable strategies are complicated. Um, yeah, also complete, um, complete lie, complete. Um, I don't want to say bullcrap. Um, <laughs> it's completely not true. Uh, some of the most successful trading strategies that I've ever used are very simple. Like even speaking of the. Uh, triangle, the forex triangle. I've generated like I've generated so many more successful trades, or I've seen it work so many so much better than any other complex strategy I've used. And yet, the triangle is one of the simplest strategies out there. And uh, you can read more about the triangle. I put up a post on that on on my blog, or or just the um, channels, the forex channels. You know, triangle plus channels. They cover eighty percent of market situations. Like uh, not necessarily that. They cover 80% of the different trading strategies out there. But in 80% of market situations, using those two strategies, you can um, make a informed decision which way you should, whether you should enter the market and which way you should enter the market. And it will have quite a good um, success rate. So trading strategies don't have to be complicated to be profitable. And don't let that scare you away from starting to trade. Myth number seven, to achieve success, you need to lose a lot of money first. Um, that is not true. Yes, a lot of traders who have become successful have gone through this. They have lost a lot of money. They've made those mistakes. They've learned from them and they have, uh, you know, now have eventually become successful. But that you don't have to go through that. That is why we have this free training so that you know the mistakes in advance and you don't make them. By f by just ruling out the mistakes that we talked about today, you probably rule out like 80 or 90 percent of the mistakes that you can possibly make when trading a foreign exchange. You don't have to go through this. You just if you have a set of rules that you're following and you're uh, you're using your clear judgment around how you trade the foreign exchange market, you can totally be successful without losing a lot of money. And I'm sure you will. We will do everything we can in this um series of tutorials so that you are equipped with all the knowledge that you need to make this happen. A few tips on this. So as we discussed, myths are things that prevent you from getting started now. So rookie mistakes can trip you up later, but myths, they prevent you from starting to trade now. And so how can you get started? Um, oh, by the way, I'm going to help you with all of this in the Forex for Complete Beginners course. We'll have specific instructions and I'll show you exactly what to do and how. But for the, for the time being, um, where do you get started? Well, you have to break it down into simple phases. So phase number one is for you to go and install MetaTrader 4. Like if you go to forexboat.com slash brokers, you'll see a list of brokers that I recommend. But you don't even need to choose a broker that you will actually trade with right now. You can just 
get MetaTrader for from any broker and install it because you're after a demo account at this stage. So that would be step number one if you haven't done that yet. Number two is the foundation. You have to research about Forex. You have to explore uh, tra different trading strategies, practice on a demo account. Remember the learning journal that we talked about before and being social and discussing and practicing things together with other traders. So that's very important. Then once you think you're ready, then you learn the basics of money management. So you've done the trading strategy part, but you still haven't done the most important bit, which is money management. It's a bit more of an advanced topic. I wouldn't say advanced. It's probably a bit more of a um, topic that you have to spend a bit more time on, like separately, uh, as opposed to, you know, one of those topics in Forex that takes a bit more time than um, I don't know, say understanding what a sell order is or what uh, what spread is and things like that. So you would need to spend a bit more time on money management, maybe maybe a day, for instance, and understand all the concepts of money management and apply that to a trading strategy because that is important. So once you've done that, move on to step number four. And when you feel ready, start a small scale real account. And I want to um, underline small scale. It's It's very important that you don't throw in a lot of money and a lot is you know depends on you what kind of person you are maybe a lot for you is um a hundred dollars then in that case uh, you need to go to a broker that has micro or mini accounts and allows you to put in one dollar and that will and then you can trade a hundred cents and it will be reflected as a hundred cents or ten dollars and that's you know a thousand cents or maybe uh, for you a thousand dollars is uh, you know a small amount is five hundred dollars maybe then you can start with five hundred for, for me, I would probably start with $100 or $200 to start off with uh, because there's a good chance that you might lose this money once you start trading. And not because you're not going to be successful or because um, that's just it's impossible to make money. No, it's just because this transition from demo to a real account has a lot of aspects to it that traders don't think about. It has a lot of psychological um, elements to it. So when you're trading on a demo account, you might be trading $10,000 and you're making a lot of money because you're following a your trading strategy successful. But if you uh, try to do the same on a real account with $10,000, you won't be able to right away. You will be in maybe a few months, you will be able to uh, replicate that same um, result. But right away, you won't be because you will inevitably have this thought in the back of your head, I'm trading real money, this is going to, this, you know, this trade can go wrong, this trade can go wrong, and you will inevitably deviate from your trading strategy. And that's why it is better to experience those emotions and those feelings on a small scale account. So start off with uh, $100, $200, $300, whatever it's can, you consider small and something that you don't mind losing because there is a good chance that you will lose your first or maybe even second account just because of that psychological element to it. And, you know, it's a, it's a price worth paying. After that, once you've experienced that, you understand, oh, okay, this is how I feel about my trades. I have to control my feelings and now I can start trading a bigger account. Okay, so the rule is don't move on to the next phase until finished with the previous phase. So going back, install MetaTrader 4, learn the foundations of trading, practice, be social, have a trading log or journal, um, then learn the basics of money management once you have some experience in uh, basics of Forex and then move on to small scale account. Don't move on to the next step unless you're finished with the previous one. And use the speech trick. So this is a, a good trick um, to use to make yourself do things. So uh, of course, if you just have these four phases in mind and you think, okay, I'll just do them when, when I can, you won't get far. Probably you won't even get to you know phase three or phase four ever because it takes time and effort and you probably still have a day job and you probably still um, you know, have other hobbies and activities that you're uh, interested in. You, in order to get this working, you have to put in um, con a concentrated amount of effort. It can't be just very dispersed or dispersed over a year or so. It has to be uh, fast, quick and um, uh, quite, quite um, concentrated or um, quite a lot or a lot of volume of effort, I guess, um, into this in a short period of time. And the speech trick, what it does is set yourself deadlines. Say, okay, I will be finished with the first phase, which is very simple, install MetaTrader for it. Just set yourself a deadline of tomorrow. I will be finished with this phase tomorrow. Then the next phase, you're know, researching Forex trading, the demo account and so on. You have to set yourself a deadline, I would say maybe two months or a month or so, maybe two months probably. And you set yourself a date, 
and why it's called a speech trick it's like is imagine you have to go and give a speech to a thousand people and whether or li- you like it or not whether you're ready or not is going to happen the day is going to come and you're going to get up there on stage and you have to give a speech so you inevitably have to prepare there's no way around it and so if you set yourself the same deadlines with these phases of getting started into forex you know then you will you have a much greater chance of getting there eventually which is good and wrapping it up so remember don't get held up by myths and avoid the rookie mistakes as you jump into the your forex trading journey um myths hold you up now rookie mistakes can trip you up later remember about them and just maybe go through uh, go through them maybe write them down somewhere this is quite important stuff and just keep them in mind and avoid them at all costs and make sure to let me know in the comment section below which one of the rookie mistakes or myths resonated with you the most so i want to know which one have you maybe experienced or which one did you feel like oh this is so me i so would have done that or which one of those rookie mistakes or myths do you relate to the most which one tell me use the comment section below i will be here i'll be jumping in to the conversations i really want to know and if you have any questions also i'll leave a comment and to finish off share this video with traders you know you might help somebody avoid some of these rookie mistakes that we talked about today or you might help somebody overcome the myths that are preventing them from trading the forex market and becoming financially independent also keep an eye out to your inbox because more free videos are coming your way soon and finally i'd like to ask you for a favor if you look around this page somewhere you'll find social share icons which look like this and if you did enjoy this tutorial then please click one of these icons where you have a profile whether it's facebook twitter google plus linkedin or reddit and share uh, this page this video with uh, your friends or people who are following you on these social networks i'd really appreciate that and you could re- you would really help me out if you could do this right now for me thanks a lot and i'll talk to you next time until then happy trading